crafty friends and welcome to Holy Wednesday. My name is Jesse and this is Miss Lead Pages. Welcome. Uh, if you're new here, uh, Wooly Wednesday and Knitcast are where I talk about my uh, my knitting projects and my yarn projects and all the nifty dyers that I've discovered and patterns that I found and things like that. So everything knitting uh, happens in Knitcast and uh, I'm happy to have you join me today. I've decided to do things a little differently today so um, I, you may have noticed. <laughs> Uh, I thought it might be fun if I could show you in a little bit more detail exactly what the knitting I'm working on looks like. Um, I thought that might be fun because it has been hard for me to hold the the um, hold my whips up, my works in progress up to you so that you can see the detail and that sort of thing. So I thought I might try this and we'll see how we like it. Um, so I do have the one whip to show you today. This is my um, my Secret Life of Cats and Dogs um, by Casapinka. We'll get into that in a second. And I have some um, I have some purchases to show you too, some stuff that I'm really excited about. So uh, let's get right into it and, um, and see what we have here today. So I haven't had a chance to show you Secret Life of Cats and Dogs in this much detail. Um, so I'm hoping I'm hoping you can see it. I can see it on the camera. It looks really cool to me. Um, so this is this yarn is my Ruby and Roses 2020 Christmas Advent, um, and I've just been. Um, I've been knitting the colors in the called for order uh, based on how Addison um, organized her colors when she sent out the advent. So, um, so that's how all the the colors are decided. Casapinka, um, uh, her name is Bronwyn. She designed the pattern based on um, an advent kit from Asylum Fibers. Um, so she she based it on the color order that those came in, um, but I've just substituted in my Ruby and Roses advent kit because I could not get the uh, Asylum Fibers advent kit when it was released. So anyway, so this is what it looks like. Um, this is one of my favorite textures here, and um, you can maybe see it a little bit on on camera. Um, I missed I messed up in the beginning um, because I was. Um, I think I was repeating the pattern too often, but I think it still looks really cool. It's a nice texture. And then we've got, I'm just gonna kind of scroll through it as it were um, to give you a good look at all the different sections. Um, so this was section one, two, three. This is section four. This is one of my favorite colors. This kind of electric blue with the marling through it. Um, and then this one has marling as well, but it's actually um, just doubled up to make a garter stitch there through a couple of rows. And then this one was fun. Um, so that's like a, a ribbed section of marling right there. This short little, this one is hard to see. I think when I block it, um, it'll come out a little bit better. So this is actually um, a sort of ribbed texture here. It's like four knits and then a purl, um, but it's kind of hard to see. I think once I once I block it, I think it'll be better. And then we've got this section with this gorgeous little detailing right through here. And the pink. And there's a little bit of mar marling here that did some strange things at the top, but <laughs> I got that there. This is this is a gorgeous section of lace, which is definitely going to need some blocking because you can't see the lace very well. But if I stretch it a bit, you can kind of see the lace happening there. So it's a nice little wave pattern there. Got this lovely sort of black and pink section with these three rows of marling. This was also a fun texture. Let me straighten it out here. This was a super fun texture. So this is very similar to that first texture I showed you, but it's only two rows and then several rows of um, stockinette and then two more rows so it, you have more space between the texture. So hopefully you can see that. It looks kind of cool. And then this is a, this is a similar section to um, that other ribbed section, but because we have multiple pearls in between the knits, you can see that ribbing a little bit better. And then this is a fun, um, a fun stitch here. So this is knit with, um, this is a few slip stitches with the yarn held in front or no, yarn held in back because you're doing, um, you're flipping it to do the knit side. So you knit and then you slip with the yarn in back and that's how you get these beautiful little, um, threads like um, 
you get this line there. <laughs> I don't know how to describe that other than that. Um, so that's a really fun thing. I love, it's amazing the, the kinds of things that you can create just by slipping some stitches. I can't wait to do Slip Stravaganza from Stephen West Knits um, because that's going to be an amazing piece that works solely on the fact that you're slipping stitches apparently. Um, this is also a super fun texture here. Um, I think it would be nice to make a whole scarf out of this texture, sort of a waffly thing. And I'm trying to remember, I think it's it's basically like a one by one rib, but then every other row you're just doing um, a purl all the way across or something. So you get these sort of like individual ribs. It's it's really interesting. And then this, this is one of my favorites, creating this sort of little window here. Um, so these are slipped stitches in between um, and they're slipped for like two rows so it creates these lines that sort of actually make little windows in the in the stitching which I think is really fun and then this is also a super fun texture um, and I'm I think this is knitting one below and then bringing it up um, and this is really soft and squishy I like it a lot <laughs> and so we're almost to where you saw last week um, so this red section, well, it's coming out very pink um, on this camera. The lighting is really bad today. It's super gray and gloomy. The sun was supposed to come out at some point, but it has not so far. Um, so this is another one of those. Um, this is actually made, and I didn't say that before, but this is actually made by... Um, doing a yarn over so wrapping your yarn around the needle and then you um you purl a couple and then you pull that wrapped um that wrapped stitch the extra stitch you pull it over those two purls and it creates these kind of little loopy things it looks really really cool um so that was the last section you saw last week i had finished that and had started working on this is i believe section 19 that i'm working on and you can see this is another slip stitch section um, and what the pattern calls for is to actually do um, the slip stitch with um, a contrasting color and you're supposed to do I think four repeats um, so you would have four of these lines now I've decided to customize it <laughs> one because I don't have a lot of this pink color because the section that it originally appeared in up here I think um, I use quite a lot of it, so I only have a teeny tiny little ball of this pink color, and I don't want to run out. But also, um, I don't want to do that many repeats. So what I'm actually going to do, um, and I haven't decided yet, um, not totally. I think I'm either going to do one more row. I think you can see here. So I've actually done that slip stitch row, but I've done it in the same color instead of changing colors. Um, so I'm, I'm either going to do one more row like this and then do one more row of the, the pink um, and then finish it off and move on to the next section. Or um, by the time I get to the slip stitch row, I might just do um, a last row of pink and then move on to finish it. So I can't decide if I'm going to do one one more repeat or if I'm done with the repeats. Um, it is a super long scarf, um, so it's not going to hurt it at all to get a little bit shortened. Uh, but like I said, I didn't want to run out of this pink, so um, I won't be doing more than one more repeat of the pink, and then I'll be on to section 20. So um, as you can see, I got a fair bit of knitting. I haven't knit a ton this week, um, but considering how little knitting I've done, you can see that I, I did a a good amount of knitting there so so that's my whip for the week um, I thought it might be fun if you got to see more of it <laughs> all at one shot or actually not all at one shot but as much of it as I can show you at one time I thought it might be I thought you might enjoy getting to see a little bit more detail I can actually bring that down even a little bit more um, so you can see those textures because those textures are really fun um, it's one of the things, and I've talked about this before, it's one of the things I love so much about Casapinka, um, all the different textures and stuff that she incorporates into her patterns. It's really fun. So uh, one last note about Casapinka, and then I'll talk about the purchases that I received this week, the things that came in the mail. Um, so um, this past Sunday was Mother's Day. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody in the U.S. knows that it was Mother's Day. Um, and if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that Mother's Day can be a difficult time for me um, because I lost my mom in 27. Um, and I miss her every single day and um, days like Mother's Day can be especially hard um, but Casapinka 
in a huge gesture of kindness and compassion. Um, she sent out a, a newsletter on Sunday, um, basically acknowledging all of us who have a hard time on Mother's Day, which um, is something unfortunately kind of rare <laughs> um, because most folks uh, for Mother's Day, especially in, you know, in the world of capitalism that we in the U.S. live in, um, you know, Mother's Day is very much about what you're buying your mom, what you're going to do for your mom, you know, that's all the advertising and all the things, um, you know, are, are kind of throwing it in your face if, um, if you're the kind of person who either can't celebrate with your mom for one reason or another, um, or, um, you don't have kids to celebrate, you've chosen not to have kids, or you can't have kids, um, or you have difficult relationships with your parents or your children or whatever, um, you know, all of all of these situations that a lot of different people fall into, um, it feels like we fall through the cracks on days like Mother's Day because um, all of the advertising wants us to do things with mom and do things for mom, and there's not a whole lot of... Um, there's not a whole lot of space for those of us who can't celebrate or don't celebrate Mother's Day for one for one reason or another. And so Casapinka sent out an email, um, you know, t offering compassion to all of those, all of us who have a hard time um, and, you know, acknowledging all of us and um, asking us to do something kind for ourselves. And as part of that, she included a code for a free pattern. Um, and that was so incredibly generous of her. And I, I so appreciate her for having done that. Um, not only, even if she hadn't included the code, it was just a very, really kind and um, moving um, message to receive on that day. Um, and she was one of um, only a couple of folks that, um, that made acknowledgements like that. And I appreciate it when people do that. I don't necessarily expect it because the majority of folks have a mom and they're celebrating with their mom and for their mom and all that sort of stuff. Um, but to have some folks take some time out of their day and say, I see you, um, you know, that was, it was really, really important. Um, so uh, I really, really appreciated that. And what I ended up purchasing, or not purchasing, the, the free pattern that I got with the code is the powder wrap, which I had been looking at, and I think I've talked about it a couple of times. Um, so now I just have to decide what yarn I'm gonna use. It, it needs like 600 yards of fingering weight, and I certainly have 600 yards of fingering weight <laughs> yarn. I just have to decide what colors I'm gonna do it in. So I did finally, um, um, get that pattern and um you know my my heartfelt thanks to Casapinka for for that acknowledgement for that sweet gesture unfortunately some people took advantage of that gesture uh by sharing that code it was only meant to be for newsletter subscribers and some folks shared it on facebook and on ravelry and that's really really unfortunate because it was such a um, I mean, it was more than kind and generous. I can't, I don't even have the words. It was just, it was beyond, um, for her to acknowledge folks like me in that way. And then, you know, for other folks to take advantage of that was really disheartening. But fortunately the outpouring of, um, support from the community, I think has overwhelmed the sourness that that left, um, for, uh, Bronwyn, who is Casapinka. So I'm really glad that the um, the community rallied around her, um, and it's interesting because a lot of folks in in response to hearing that people had been taking advantage of the free code, um, they actually went and bought lots of extra patterns. Um, so instead of using the free code, they went and just purchased lots of her patterns, um, sort of as a you know thumbing their nose at the folks that decided to take advantage of the free code. Um, and I think that's super sweet. And I probably would have joined in except that I had already purchased four patterns like a week before so <laughs> I sort of pre-purchased um so I haven't bought any extra patterns because I already have like six patterns of castle pinkas that I haven't I haven't knitted yet so anyway that's this week's story <laughs> so as a side note you know um I hope that that you all um, enjoyed Mother's Day, whatever it was for you. Um, and if you're one of those folks that's like me and your mom has passed or you have difficult relationship with your mom or your kids or whatever your situation is, we've chosen not to have kids. If your fur babies are your kids, whatever your situation is, if, you, if you're if one of the ones that had a hard time, I see you. Um, I see you. And I'm there with you. And, uh, and I appreciate you. And I hope that you took care of yourself and did something nice for yourself that day. So... Anyway, before I get too, uh, <clears throat> too in my feels, let's, <laughs> uh, 
Let's move on to some purchases. Give me just one second. I don't know if you can see this. I've made sort of a stromboli of my <laughs> of my secret life of cats and dogs with my slow cat. I think it's kind of funny. I folded it up. It's a stromboli. It's going right over there now. <laughs> So let's talk about purchases. Um, you all know that I subscribe to the Little Bishes Stitches um, small, uh, what is it, the mini things in Life Club. <laughs> Little Bishes Stitches is um, a German dyer. She's fantastic. Um, I want to say that her name is Kathy. Um, try, I try to recall all the dyers' names, but I'm not always terribly good at it. So, um, Anyway, it's a 12-month club, and um, because it's coming from Germany, it does take me a little bit of time to actually receive my yarn, um, but ever since February, um, it's been getting through customs a little bit more quickly, so I'm actually only getting it maybe a week or so later than the folks that are getting it who, are, who live in Europe who are receiving it, so that's nice. So I just got my box this week. Um, super excited about it, super happy with it. The one thing I will say is that uh, USPS evidently decided that it would be fun to sit on the box or something so part of it was actually like squished down and that was really unfortunate because there had been a bath bomb in, <laughs> in the package that was one of the fun goodies that came this month um, was a little bath bomb um, but it got pulverized it was completely pulverized to the point where I wasn't really sure whether I wasn't sure what it had been I thought it might have been like a powdered sugar cookie but it was not it was not cookies at all it was a bath bomb that got pulverized um, but nothing else was was damaged or messed up or anything like that um, it, and the actually the bath bomb is still usable <laughs> considering you just dump it into water anyway it's still totally usable um but it was uh, it was fun trying to figure out what it was until um i could get with Heike and be like so what came in the box this time because i don't know what this is um and then we got a requisite uh the tea um she always sends a packet of tea or i'm sorry a tea bag um and this time it was turkish apple i think i've already put it I'm not sure what I did with it, honestly. When I opened the box, I think I put it in the kitchen already. So it was Turkish apple this time, and there was also a um, a little um, package of um, Haribo gummies, uh, which I ate immediately. So I don't have this to show you. I love Haribo gummies. Um, so yeah, it was delicious. Um, the other additional little fun thing was um, this mini skein of yarn, which I'm going to put in the camera under here for you to see. <laughs> I thought this might be fun too, so you can see the yarn up close. So, um, hand dyed by Little Bishes. Um, this is a mini skein. It's 100% merino, high twist, in the colorway Wolverine, which I think is fun. So it's 80 meters, 20 grams. Um, so this is your standard mini size. And look at the colors. So it's got this like dark blue, black, um, and green and blue and yellow. Um, it's really, really nice, and um, you can tell it's the high twist. It's got that really kind of like thick, ropey texture, <clears throat> which is really fun. It's so funny because when I see it in a skein like this, it always seems like it's an inexpensive yarn, like somehow that's that's of lesser quality. But honestly, high twist is really fun to knit with. Um, I really enjoy knitting with high twist. So I'm excited about this because this is going to go straight into my... Um, um, my inauguration celebration. Um, I'm going to work this into that, I think, um, because I think that will be a really cool color to add to that whole, that whole shebang. So I'm excited about that. So that came with the yarn. And then we also got the, um, it always comes with, before I show that to you, <laughs> um, what the club actually is, is five 20 gram mini skeins, um, in a coordinated, in coordinating colorways, along with a, um, 50 gram skein of mohair. So this is the mohair for this month. So that's what it looks like at this level. And then this is what it looks like down here. Um, the color is a bit washed out in this um, down facing camera, but it's still really, really gorgeous. So it's the Many Things in Life Yarn Club. And this is the mohair. Look at the colors in that. So we've got some green and pink and orange all the different colors and this is let's see is there a specific name morning dew is the name of this colorway 72 percent kid mohair 25 percent merino nine percent silk um and i've been um 
listening and talking to some folks um, who are saying that really one of the best ways to use this is to hold it double with um, a fingering or sock weight yarn so you get that fuzziness in there. So at some point I will be I will be doing that. I've also seen um, some patterns that will use mohair for a section. Um, like if you're if you're knitting a sweater, you might do the yoke with mohair so that it's a little bit more see-through, um, and then the rest of it is um, is a thicker yarn so that it's it's opaque and it gives you a really interesting kind of look. So that's the mohair for and this is all for April. So that's really nice. I like that. And then here is the mini skeins, y'all. These are so cute. So pretty. So it comes off a little orangey. It's not really as orange as it appears in that one camera. It's more pink. Pink, pink, pink. I love this middle skein, y'all. I love it. Love it, love it. This is also high twist. So you can see it's got that ropey, ropey consistency. And you can really see the sparkle in this camera, can't you? So that's Stelina that is also mixed in with the fiber there. Um, let's see, here is the tag. So this is Awakening, this um, this little set. 75% Merino, 20% Nylon, 5% Stelina. These are all 20 gram skeins. And these colors are just awesome. Like I said, I especially love this middle one. I guess it's the play of the yellow against the purple and the pink. I don't know. I just really like it. It reads very urban to me, very city. It's like a cityscape at sunset or something. I don't know. That's kind of how it's reading to me. This one is like my second favorite. If I can hold it so you can see it. So this one is sort of like a cityscape at night. <laughs> and then there's this green one on the side and the two pinks. It's gonna be fabulous. And I think I've mentioned this before, but five 20 gram skeins is a hundred grams. So I mean that's enough for that's enough for a project, especially if you um if you were to mix it with the mohair, you know, you can make a thing out of that. Um it might be a small thing, but you can make a thing out of that. So um yeah. So I love the fact that pretty much every box is a project. It's really, it's such a value for what it is. I keep telling Rachel this. I've almost gotten her enabled. Almost. We're like this close, this close to getting Rachel enabled. <laughs> Don't be mad, Rachel. <laughs> She's watching this going, Jesse. <laughs> oh, ma'am. <laughs> anyway, so that is my little bishes, April um, little things in life installment, which I really, really love. So every every month is exciting. I love these boxes. I'm definitely going to have to um, to join another club next year because I just I really enjoy it. As much as I stress over actually receiving the yarn in the mail because of how USPS is running, um, I really love receiving it in the mail. It's fun. So the other thing I have for you today um, is a little. Um, I went a little overboard, <laughs> shall we say, with the spring collection from Ruby and Roses. Um, it, it's maybe less overboard than it's going to look here in a second, but um, but I got a lot of yarn uh, when she did her spring release, <laughs> and that just arrived yesterday. So let's start with... <laughs> I have so much, y'all. Um, so we have this. <laughs> This is the Spring Mini Collection Tonal Set. Um, these are 20 gram mini skeins, 80% superwash, 20% nylon. So I'll, I'll hold them under here so you can see. Look at that purple. That purple is so awesome. But yeah, as you can see, these are tonal, so they're, they're relatively solid colors. No speckles, no variegation, that kind of stuff. Just um, multiple tone, you know, just sort of, well, tonal. <laughs> so you have a little bit of depth of color, so it's not a single flat color, um, but they are not variegated. They don't have multiple colors in the skein. It's just the one color per skein. That's a really lovely red. Um, and that pink, gorgeous, gorgeous colors. I love this blue. This electric blue. It's not coming off as intense on this camera as it actually is, but I love, love that blue. So these are the tonals. There's a sort of a purpley gray in there too. I like that. If I can hold it so you can see it. It's really nice. Um, so those are the tonals. And then I also bought the speckles. <laughs> <laughs> the mini, uh, the mini speckles, and I think, let's see, this is 10, I think, so that's 6, yeah, so this is 10, the tonal mini skeins, 
and this is the Spring Collection uh, Speckle Skeins. So let me hold that there for you. So these are going to be, um, these are somewhat reminiscent of some of the colorways that we've seen in the 2020 um, Advent. Um, this one is one of my favorites. It's the green with the purple all shot through it. And then we've got this purple. Y'all know how much I love purple. And we have this gorgeous um, really pale pink with the speckly stuff. I just love all these colors. Her speckles are fantastic. I love them. So yes, and another blue. Love it, love it, love it. So this is, uh, what is that, seven? Two, four, six, yes, seven mini skeins that are speckled. Love them. And last but not least, we have a sock set. <laughs> so this is the New Beginnings. Um, sock set. So that's what the colorway is called. These are all the plump rose base, which as you can see is a high twist base. Um, they're all 80% merino, 20% nylon, um, two ply high twist. So they all look, they all have that same kind of texture. And um, so this is, as I said, this is New Beginnings. Let me hold it so you can see. So this is a full skein of that gorgeous blue, green, purple mix which was probably my absolute favorite colorway uh, that she came up with spring and then it's got that um, sort of mauve um, accent color which I think is fantastic so I can totally see doing a one skein project with this with a little bit of accent in there I think that, and it's so squishy it's so squishy oh I love how squishy this yarn is <laughs> love it love it love it so I'm very excited very excited for all this um, for all the minis <laughs> so many minis. My life is full of minis, y'all. I don't know what it is. I do not know what it is about mini skeins. I am just, I am a fiend for mini skeins. So anyway, that's my Ruby and Roses haul. The good thing is, um, let me tell you this. The good thing is that um, these were all the pre-orders. So she has finished her pre-order shipping. Um, everybody who ordered um, in the pre-order spring collection sale um, should have, uh, certainly it's been shipped by now. Let me send that up a little bit. Um, it's been shipped by now. Hopefully everybody's received them. But the fun thing is, if you missed out on the pre-sale for the spring collection, it is not too late to get spring collection color. She is having a shop update on May 16th. I can't remember the specific time, but if you follow her on Instagram, you can see the post where she talked about it. Um, she's doing a shop update on the 16th where she has extras of all of these things. Um, she will have them all listed for sale. So if you missed them the first in the pre-orders, you still have a chance to get them on the 16th of May. So um, if any of these are things that you love, if you love any of these colors, um, and there are a number of different sock sets that include a, like a large skein of a speckle colorway and then um, a mini skein of one of the tonals. Um, so there's a bunch of sock sets and then she's got the mini skein sets, um, the speckles and the tonals. Um, so if any of those are something that you're absolutely in love with and you didn't get a chance to get it on a pre-sale, you still have a chance to buy them. So uh, plug, plug, enable, enable. <laughs> That's there for you if you needed that that little bit of enabling so well folks that's all I have for you today I hope you have enjoyed it I've enjoyed my time with you um, and as always remember to stay hydrated remember to take all the meds that you need to take and remember that you are enough and I will see you all again next time have a great one Bye.